labor too long. Uh, uh, we want to give a relevant word. We're glad that you are here this this Sunday morning. We will be in here at least two to three times a month, and then on every first Sunday, we'll be right at Millwood High School. Hallelujah. Then we will have, uh, I think that they're working on this, whether it be potluck or meal, they'll coordinate that uh, in the right way. And then also, we will not get a chance to hear our lively radio program called Expositions of Truth. Woo, I'm so happy about that because we get to actually amen somebody. Give uh, uh, the Word of God uh, with crystal clear clarity and with regularity on uh, the Heart and Soul 92.1 and 1140. And we're grateful for God for giving us a time. God gave us a time of our own. And we're grateful uh, for Holy Chapel right at the nick of time. Right at the nick of time, God saw fit. Uh, to bring another ministry on, and so uh, Pastor Holy, Amen. Holy Chapel just decided to retire. Lord, I pray. You see how God does things. Uh -huh. We didn't have to hustle and finagle and rob somebody from their radio spot, and we're grateful to the way, uh, uh, the way Church of Christ for being able uh, to make that happen. Isaiah chapter forty-three, uh, beginning with verse number eighteen. Lord, help this word. 43, 18, the Bible says, Remember ye not the former things, neither consider the things of old. Behold, I will do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth. Shall ye not know it? I will even make a way in the wilderness and rivers and the desert. Beasts of the field shall honor me, the dragons and the owls, because I give waters in the wilderness and the rivers and the desert to give drink to my people, my chosen. This people I have formed for myself, they shall show forth my praise. Church, I like getting things new. I just want to talk about this morning, Lord, do a new thing. I like things new. I like to get things new. I'm sorry. I, I know uh, our great deacon told us that, look, uh, everything in that Bible is right. And when he did the giving, you know, we, we sometimes wrap our minds around what we're going to buy for someone. And then in many offices, we have gifts, get a $5 gift. And I just like opening something new. It's about all to say, man, when you get something and you open it, the very fact that it is new, it's refreshing, it's brand new. You, you try it on for the first time, and no doubt I'm looking at brothers and sisters in this room. You go in your closet, there's something that you haven't even worn with the tag on it. It is still new. Basketball players in here, when you get on the court, it's something about lacing up a new pair of Jordans, if you're in the AAU like my two boys here. And, uh, it, it's something about lacing up something new that's exciting. Well, my brothers and sisters, in this particular passage of Scripture, God, through Isaiah, says, Remember ye not the former things, neither consider the things of old, because I'm going to do a new thing. He's talking to Israel. He's talking to his covenant people. Do y'all remember Israel saying, man, the same Israel that was tied in Egyptian bondage, the same Israel that God had to lead through the wilderness, they got tired, they got upset of eating the same old, same old, and the same old stuff, and the same old thing happening. Let me just digress. Aren't you tired of the same old Monday, same old Tuesday, same old depression, same old spirit, same old people to deal with, same old thing? Sometimes you wake up, Lord, give me something if I don't get anything new, Lord, then apply it to me personally. Give me a new attitude. Give me a new attitude. Lord, give me a new disposition towards my wife. Give me a new disposition towards my husband. Give me new energy to raise my children. Lord, give me something new. So, this morning, my brothers and sisters, I, I just thought it would be good to refresh our minds from this book of old in Isaiah. His old time people, but with a relevant message for us today, we want something new. God said, behold, I'll do a new thing, and 
now it shall spring forth. Let me just say uh, this because the elephant is in the room. This is a new ministry. Oh, but just because it's new, it's not a fad, it's not a gimmick, we're not trying church. It's the same old God with the same old faith, but God does something new in us every day. Yes, I hold us too long. The lamentation writer through the prophet Jeremiah would say that his mercies are new every morning. Somebody in here, if you didn't get encouraged thus far, let me just drop this nugget in parenthetically. He's giving you something new, and a lot of times when you get something new, you have to break it in. Yeah, yeah, when I'm on the court playing those shoes, you got to break those Jordans in. They, they, something about hard leather that has to get soft. Somehow or the other, when we became members of the body of Christ, uh, we enrolled in the curriculum of... I come after he had already died for my sins. And then I try to get my little life together. Somebody has to submit. Yeah. Yeah. Somebody has to submit. So the text is telling us that I gave you, I gave you waters in the wilderness. And the fact of the matter is, God satisfies the longing heart in Psalm 37. I don't have time. You read on your own time. Psalm 37, division, verses 3 through 7. Psalm 25, Psalm 37. Some of us don't get this. I'm not going to mention this so that you can out -sin God and be a better sinner. I'm still trying to get over the fact that how David walked and lived, God is only after people who have a heart for it. See, we got it wrong. I'm not, we got to live right. But David was that person. I've illustrated this before. David was a person who had a different heart. So while on the run, that's how Psalms was written, on the run, in and out of caves. He was so in love with God that in the midst of danger, y'all read the Psalms. He'd be running from King Saul. And then he went to the cave of Adullam with the wild bears and lions and tigers. He gets up one night around between Psalm 32 and 51 and gets up in the midst of danger and looks up. Oh, the heavens declare the glory of God. And the firmament declares your handiwork. And then he get on a run. He go to another cave and he don't know what to do, but you read about Psalmist. He was so puny, but he didn't have no resource, but then lions and tigers and bears come and they ain't got an equipment to, to kill them. He ain't gonna run. And then he stopped. The Lord is my shepherd. I should not want. The song was written out of the life of ups and downs. David wasn't in no worship. Y'all got that. We got this wrong. He wasn't in no worship service and everything was going good. Then he was writing a song. He was writing it like some of y'all. Some of y'all don't want to drive. Some of y'all have jobs. You have to deal with difficult people. It's the same thing. What's the new thing he want to do? He wants to do a new thing in me so that when people respond angrily, I respond happily. That's new. He wants to do a new thing that when people are unloving, I become more loving. He wants to do a new thing where I'm used to squaring off and yeah, we can go on and tap with each other, but he's used to, uh, uh, the Lord wants a new thing to where you'll know how to turn the other cheek. I want to do a new, a new thing. I, I'm a close right here. Look at this. Verses 22 through 26 of this verse, chapter 43. But thou hast not called upon me, O Jacob, but thou hast been weary of me, O Israel. Thou hast not brought me the small cattle of thy burnt offerings, neither hast thou honored me with thy sacrifices. I have not caused you to serve with an offering, nor wearied thee with incense. Thou hast brought me no sweet cane with money, neither hast thou filled me with the fat of sacrifices. But watch this. Thou hast made me, check this out, church, serve your sins. You have wearied me with your iniquities. All right. When was the last time you heard this in church? The church has been so fake. It just has. I'm a, it's, it's been fake. 
The Lord said, now, you haven't done some things. Now, look at this. This is what he wants. You haven't even called on me. Yeah. Number one, you ain't called. And you've been weary of me. You haven't given. You haven't contributed. What did they do? Check this out. It's in verse. Y'all, this may be so deep, it's easy to see. You made me serve your sins. That's what else he says. I, I, I want to hang right here. I promise you, I'll close right here. He, he says, you made me serve your sins. You have wearied me. Not with sins. Not with transgressions. Iniquities. Yeah. You need to be in a teaching church. Some churches don't even know how the difference between those three words. Sin missing the mark. Transgressions missing the mark on purpose. Iniquities purposefully missing the mark with an intent towards evil perpetually. Why don't we just break it down in church and quit playing with people? This is what's making God mad. He's spending more time, Lawrence, quit thinking about that. Let me just break it down. He's spending more time, and I don't mean no harm, and you quit occupying your mind with that. He's spending more time, Brother Jackson, serving us for our selfish needs. That's what God is doing. He's saying, look, I want to do a new thing. I already sent my son to redeem you of your sins, and I'm spending more time serving the sins of God's people. It's going to scare y'all. Ananias and Sapphira, have you ever checked them out? That's God serving sin. We may disagree with this theology. They were, God moved them aside before they'd be further damaged to the church. All right. I don't know, but their eternal life may be fixed. He moved them aside. God, further frustration. If we perpetually frustrate, sometimes God has hidden every last one of our sins. He has. Everybody in here has been creeping and dipping. Everybody in here has. Everybody in here has done this. <laughs> if you're like, don't get out. That's not, that's, the, that's for real. And God has, he served that. Y'all not hear me. You know what he did to Moses? I'm being real with this. Moses saw his countrymen being mistreated. He took them out. What did God do? Go on the back side of the desert. Sometimes God, through the stuff you and I have done, serves you. I get this. Okay. You have been served. It's as simple as that. When you see that text, God is not talking about when we sin, He served. No. Whom the Lord loveth each every person in here, if you're His child, God is not too busy to not see you. He got his eyes on Marissa, his eyes on me, and his eyes on Reed. And you let us try doing something. He's got us on lock. So he'll serve you, Sister Mahatman Omi, in a way where he gets your attention. Only it's not going to work for Reed. Yeah. He knows how to deal with you. Whom the Lord loveth, he chased whom. The whom is not transferred and then you have a home where God knows how to deal with you, station he knows how to deal with you. The whole package of your family. His design, church, is you got to constantly call on him. There ought to be a constant contribution to God. A constant honor and glory to God. If not, then you're going to be in sin and iniquity. 
What did David do? The failure to confess Bathsheba caused him to go into transgression. That's why he had her husband killed, man. Well, enough in the sin. He had to transgress, man, and marry her. She's going to find out if he get the right kid. Then he was just rolling in iniquity. And so by the time Psalm 51 says, he said, Lord, wash me. I'm down when I say he wants to do a new thing. The new thing is old. But it's new. What is it new? What, what's new? New purpose, new energy. He wants to change you mentally. Some people are mentally stricken by Satan. Yes. Emotionally stricken by Satan. And it's the same old stuff. Satan didn't want Eve to realize her newness in the garden. So he attacked her with some old information that she should have known. Yeah. Has not God said he don't want you to be like him? Church. Let's do a new thing. There's nothing new in the church, nothing new in the Bible, but a new thing with regards to your personality, your spirit. And please, let us not have a sin of ingratitude. We're standing all over the room now. We're done. We're standing all over the room. Let's stand. Let's stand. Let's stand. If you're not a child of God, he wants to do a newer thing in you. Let's save your soul. Jesus Christ died on the cross, was buried, and rose again. This text was written by Isaiah, who points to Jesus.